Hello all. A very good evening and greetings to one and all. I wish you all happiness, peace and success going forward. I'm so glad and in fact thrilled to announce that I'm relaunching this channel wherein I would like to explain the technical facets of SAP starting from elemental level and reaching the complex part. I am also planning to cover the functional aspects as well. I am trying to keep my videos as short as possible so that I could keep the information so precise and keep you all well informed about the different aspects that we discuss. So let me directly jump into the topic. So in today's discussion, we are going to discuss about an elemental object, a very basic object of SAP, that is a data element. Yes, you all would have read so many content about the data element. I thought I'll keep it very precise and concise so that the necessary information that we all need to know about a data element is conveyed to you. So let me directly jump into it. So data element, as we know, basically it gives us the semantic details and the technical details of a field. Now, when we talk about the semantic details and technical details, we all know the difference, but what part of a data element comes under semantic definition and what part comes under the technical definition of a data element. So before we get into the topic, I would like to uh, show a small snippet. It's like a hand notes that I have written for you. So these are all the topic that I will be taking it. And I would like to show each of this topic individually in the system as well. Okay, let's quickly jump into it. First, we all know data element is a semantic definition of a field. Yes. So what are all these semantic attributes or semantic definition means? So semantic definition basically covers a lot of semantic attributes to it. The first one being short text. Short text is very elemental. Like whenever we create a data element, what we give here is actually the short text, the shortest description for any data element. So this basically reflects back whenever the field is being used at different instances, this short description will occur for us to give us the purpose or in other words, the details about the data element. Coming back to the field label, the field label is one of the interesting aspect of this particular data element. Now, before we get into the field label, you see we have different lengths defined here. Say it is 10, it is 15, it is 20. And when it is 10, the field label is target. 15 when it is its destination airport and 20 it is destination in a complete statement and airport. Uh, to let you know why this difference in length and what does this difference in length actually implies as a description, I will run a short report here. So this is basically a normal standard report, BCALB grid 07. I'm executing the report. If you see here, this particular field, now if you see it is very short, I have opened in the other window, the same data type, I mean the data element that is used on this particular field. I have used, I have opened the data element, the other window, and this is the data element. Now, if you watch closely, the width of this particular column is very small, probably less than five. That's the reason you are getting displayed with APT because up to the length of four, the field label will display only APT. Now I gradually increase it to say 10. See, it has got changed into target. Now, when the field length is 10, target is supposed to display, it, which is right. We are getting the value there. Now I increment it further. You are getting destination airport. So with the length is 15 or less, it will be destination airport. Bingo, we got the same. Now if I extend it completely as much as possible, which is more than 20, then it displays destination airport. So this is actually what this field label lengths and descriptions indicate for us. So it basically helps us in defining the table name irrespective of the length that is being used while displaying 
so it's mostly for the ui purpose and yes i hope uh, you would agree the usefulness of it now coming moving forward the documentation so what is a documentation so this documentation basically helps us in letting know what is i mean what are all the details of any particular field now let, let me let me take you back to the same report so here if i want to understand this particular field i wanted to understand what is the data element that is being used we all know we used to press f1 so when we press f1 this what you see here is the documentation so this documentation has to be maintained at the data element level now for example let me go to the same data element again how do we reach the documentation part you can go to more you can directly click on documentation or you can click on control 7 or you can also go to go to and display documentation and you can either display or change of course it's a standard so i'll just go for display and if you see here it will open the same documentation that we have seen before so since it's a standard what we can't do is directly editing this particular option is not possible but whereas for a custom data element yes you can directly go and edit so in this case for the documentation you have to create while well, i mean basically you can't change it directly so when you click on change it will ask for a modification name just like an enhancement tag which we use for the normal enhancement concepts so you create a modification name you create the modification and then you do the changes there and those changes gets applied and uh, if you see further there is something called as supplementary documentation so this supplementary documentation is basically for each of the documentation that we have for a data element there are also some additional information that can be passed by sap to us in the form of supplementary documentation so if we want to add those supplementary documentation we need to first select the particular data element and we need to see if there is any supplementary documentation available for this so to check that if a data element has any supplementary documentation what we can directly do is we can go to a table the table is thlpf this is the table if you execute this table you will get all the fields all the programs all the uh, fields i mean programs and all the fields that is being used and uh, will it will basically completely give you all the supplementary documentation details so for example these are all the data elements that is being used and uh, for whichever element or for whichever element a supplementary document i mean a supplementary id is there you can find it out through here okay so for example let me go to this particular field so the field name is bwbis okay so let me directly open okay i'll directly go to the table of it let me open the table okay not here i have to open the table here okay it's a table or a structure and then let me search for the field here okay let me search for the field here yeah we have the field here now if we get into this element data element and if i try to reach out the supplementary documentation and if i try to reach out here you will find one entry available for it and how did i find it i found it through the table that i gave, gave you for reference so this table basically holds this all the information regarding this supplementary documentation okay now moving back to the topic so here we have covered about the documentation the supplementary documentation and if you want to apply your own documentation for a standard data element you have to go for uh, the modification you have to create basically a modification element and then you have to apply your changes now how do you understand the status or the documentation status basically like for example documentation any documentation i mean any data element can have any documentation but how will you know what is 
the documentation status of the particular data element. You definitely have a field for that called as documentation and you can click on status. So if you click on status, by default, most of the data elements will have object request documentation, which clearly indicates that this data element requests documentation. So they will have to maintain some documentation. And the second option, object not used on any screens. This means that the data element is never being used on any DIN profiles or web DIN profiles. So no further documentation is really required because it is not brought to the UI end. The third one, object is documented by its short text. So which means that the short text, whatever you have given here, the description, whatever you have given here is more than enough to explain about this field. So no documentation required. And the fourth one, documentation is currently or postponed temporarily, which means like uh, the data element requests documentation, but it is not existing as of now. So these are all the different details. As of a as a, for a custom data element is concerned, you can very well go and maintain the documentation for it, and you can fix the status accordingly. So we covered this documentation, we covered the supplementary documentation details, we covered the document status as well, all four. Now moving on to search help. Now, if you take in case of a search help here, for example, I have taken this particular data element. So this search help, basically, how it helps us is, I'll take a different data element where actually a search help is assigned. So if this, if you go to this search help, you have a data search help assigned. We will see about search help detail in a different video wherein I will be discussing about the uh, composite form or an elementary form of search help. But for now here they have assigned a search help and they have assigned a parameter. Now if you get into the search help, you could find there are different fields. So these fields are basically used for finding the customer number basically. Whenever I press F4 on any particular, whenever this data element is used on any field and I press F4 on that field, I will be given a pop-up with these two fields, KUNNR and BUKRS. Now I can filter out the required customer number by providing a pattern values for both this BQRS and KUNNR. Now what does this parameter actually indicate? So this parameter is actually the value that I want to bring back to the field. Once I press F4, I use certain filter conditions and I narrow down the particular value that I wanted. And when I click on that cell line item, basically it will be having a lot. I mean, basically it will be having three to four different columns, right? So these four different columns out of these four different columns, I wanted only my customer value to be brought back because I'm using the search help for my customer. So that's the reason this KUNNR is being used as a parameter here. Uh, let us check if we can actually use this. Oh, yes. So here I'm not giving any input. I'm just trying to. So, yes, there are different search terms here. If you see, this is a collective search help. So there are different. These are all the different search windows. I can search my customer based upon any of these tabs. Okay. Yes, we will discuss about search help later. But once I display, once I narrow down using the select conditions I display, I'll be displayed with four to five columns and out of which I wanted only the customer to be brought back. And that's the reason exactly I maintain customer as the parameter here. So moving ahead, parameter ID. So the get set parameter, which is very famous. Like for example, whenever a particular data element is being used and you wanted to set a parameter for this particular field. This mo mostly these functionalities are very useful whenever they are used in DIN Pro screens or in other transactional screens. For example, during call transactions, when I want to call a transaction and I have a selection field in that, and I want to assign the value from my program to that particular field, I can assign the value using the set parameter. Similarly, I can use the same parameters to be uh, to receive the value also using the get keyword. Mostly when you design screens at uh, the reports, this parameter value plays a major role. Yes, which we will of course see later. Moving ahead, the default component name. So you see here, this particular data element is given a value of customer as the default component name. Now what does this default component name actually helps us? So it is basically used in APIs in particular 
for example it's it's it i mean they should use this as a proposal to be more precise okay the default component name of any data element is just a naming suggestion okay for the structure components or table fields defined with reference to this data element and mostly these comes under apis where it helps us with proposing uh, the actual group that they belong to okay so moving ahead change document so the change document as you see here there is a checkbox here so when you have this change document checkbox checked whichever table fields that uses this particular data element will be logged for any changes right so it's basically with reference to this data element whatever changes are being done for the particular field which uses this data element will be logged and how are we going to know about these changes that's again uh, like there is a different object groups and multiple mo I mean, the function modules are used uh, where we can retrieve the change logs but that's entirely different concept but this is the basic purpose of it okay now input history when do we go for this input history this is basically used on certain sensitive fields wherein we really don't want the users to know about the history of the values that has been entered on that particular field again it is going to reflect only on web done pro screens or any ui screens that is being used but yes but this is the actual purpose of it and uh, if you see here i would have referred a couple of notes here for you probably you can check these notes which will give you more detailed analysis okay now this bi-directional options so what does this bi-directional options mean as you see here this bi-directional has two different parameters say basic direction and then no bd filtering bidi it's again bi-directional so when you check this the basic direction is set to left to right so whatever this is just the writing direction to be more precise whether you want to go it from left to right or right to left that's what it decides and what does bidi filter i mean no bidirectional filter means they basically are used to prevent the unicode formatting characters okay uh, that specify like some characters or some writings of uh, bidirectional fonts they have for example arabic they have a different form, font altogether so this is basically help uh, this basically helps us in preventing the unicode formatting and uh, the global system we have a, actually a program for it where the global system setting is made in the program uh, we have the program starts with i18 n underscore set data element underscore flags so using that you can find out the global settings now moving back so this is the bi-directional options now all these whatever we have defined disc, I mean discussed now contribute towards the semantic attributes of the data element in other words these are all called as the semantic details of a data element which is which reflects in a field okay now I want to show a short thing about this bi-directional now for example let me create a small data element uh, let me show a data element that I have created okay so if you see here this bi-directional field is not available that's because the data element that I've used here is integer now for example I'm using a numc okay and I'm trying to activate still the bi-directional field won't appear but when i use only a character field and i activate this bidirectional field would appear which makes it clear that this bidirectional is only for character fields and it is not for any numeric digits or it is not for any numsy data types as well so that's another important takeaway from this uh, bidirectional concept now moving ahead we have almost discussed all the semantic attributes that is with specific to data elements but it doesn't stop there domain also possess certain semantic characteristics which we will see in another video about the details of the domain yeah so that's it for the semantic dev details about a data element now small use cases that i would like to let you know the significance while being used as dinpro field so as i told you before all these data elements has 
a major significance only when being used as a DIN Pro field. So that's why they are called as in semantic details. And uh, exceptions, there are certain exceptions like default component name and the flag for change document doesn't work even when used in DIN Pro fields. Okay, like these, these, this, the, the significance may not be felt when used in a DIN Pro fields, but rather whenever it is being updated, whenever the table is being changed in the back end, right? So that time the changes actually gets logged for those fields. And data objects declared with a reference data type, which we are going, going to see in the ne next slide, they ignore the semantic attributes. Now, we'll move on. First, we have seen the semantic details of a data element. Now we are going to see the technical attributes. So this technical attributes, basically whatever you see in this tab is called as the technical attributes which is elementary and reference. Again, in elementary, you can define the technical details. What is the technical attributes? In other words, it's basically the exact data type and the number or the count through which a field can exist. So those details, the technical details, the, data, the actual data type details that is defined for a data element is called as a technical attributes. So that can be defined at elementary level wherein you have two options built-in wherein you can provide your own data type or you can use an existing domain which of course is a separate topic we'll see later and the reference type so here in reference type when you try to assign you can actually refer the data type of any of these objects that you see you can assign the data element of a data element you already know assign the data element of a structure which you already know a database table table types views classes interface basically you can assign the data element or in other words you can refer the data element of entirely different facet here that's why it's called as reference data type and again reference data type has its own built-in data type as well wherein you can provide the details and you can construct your reference variable here but whenever this reference data type is used that's what I told here the semantic part the semantic details the semantic attributes is ignored that's what we discussed here so friends I mean before we log off I just wanted to show you something interesting for example this is a data element okay so I have created a test program wherein I'm using this particular data element this is just for knowledge purpose this is something i mean most of you of course would have come across but this is something interesting now if you see here i have defined this as a parameter now if i go to and if i go on to the text element of it when i go to the selection text and when i try to use this uh p when this is that underscore this as a dda reference and i click enter you see no dictionary text found for the ZYTDE. Now I'll go to the same data element. If you see here, I have maintained the short description, but still I don't get it, right? <laughs> so this indicates that the text description does not come from here. Now I go to field label. I have maintained heading, but still I don't get it. But when do I get it? I do get it when I maintain the short length, say DE, which is data element, the medium length which is data element and okay i'll copy the same data element here as well so when i maintain these values okay okay this error is probably i have mentioned it as 10 okay i should mention it as say okay i'll mention it as 10 and i'll reduce this value element okay and i'm trying to activate it again error okay okay i have not defined any domain here my bad so let me go to the data okay i will define some value here okay i will activate it now i have activated it spare with me for the time the system takes so once it is activated 
now if you go back and click on this DDI reference and press enter now you will get the value that has been maintained here in the field label populating here right which is the long text so basically this is just for your understanding uh, this is something most of us would have come across but yes of course this video is only for the beginners basically i hope we had a profound analysis on data element part i would love to show more examples in the coming videos and each topic will be discussed in depth so that it will be useful in educating the beginners and people who are interested in knowing in-depth analysis or in-depth understanding about the different concepts we have. Thank you so much for sparing with me. Thank you. Have a wonderful day again.